Hi, I'm Matt. In this series of cad videos, we're going to be looking at the fundamentals of video editing in Adobe Premiere Pro. I'm going to be using Premiere CS6 because that's the version of the software supplied to cad partners. Although Premiere Pro is a powerful tool designed for professional use, and it can look quite daunting at first, it's not actually that hard to get to grips with. And my aim in this series is to show you how easy it can be. We're going to go through all the things you need to know to put together a simple video, from setting up a project to exporting a completed edit as a video file. We're not going to be able to talk about everything Premiere has to offer, but there's still quite a lot to cover. So we've divided this training into five separate videos, and to help you navigate each video, we've added chapter buttons on the left-hand side of the screen, so you can just click on the buttons to jump to the sections most relevant to you. If you have Premiere on your computer and you want to follow along, you can download the footage we'll be using by clicking on the link below. So let's go ahead now and launch Premiere. I'm using a PC, so to launch Premiere, I need to search for the software in the start menu. It's a purple PR icon, so I've already got it set up here as a shortcut, but if you can't find it, you'll have to search for it here. On a Mac, you can search for it using the spotlight, or you may find it already on your dock. So I'm just going to type Premiere in here, and you'll get a list. I've got two versions of Premiere installed on my computer. The one we want is Adobe Premiere Pro CS6, so I'm just going to click on the name here to launch the program. The first thing you're presented with is this welcome window. If you have any recent projects, they'll be listed here and you'll be able to click on them. Alternatively, you can click on this open project icon to search for an old project on your computer. Or you can create a new project by clicking on this icon here. We're going to create a new project, so let's click on that. Now what you'll see is this new project window. This is where you name your project and choose where you want the file to be saved. You name your project where it says untitled. So if you click inside the box, you can give it whatever name you want. I'm going to delete the word untitled and call this project Learning Premiere. Now I want to set my location, which tells Premiere where to save the project file. To do that, let's click on Browse. As you can see, that opens a file browser. Premiere creates lots of files along with your project, such as auto saves and previews. So it's a good idea to have your Premiere project in a dedicated folder alongside your footage. This will keep all of your Premiere files together in one place. For the purposes of this video, I've already created a folder on my desktop inside a project folder along with my footage. So I'm going to navigate to that now. And there's the folder. So if you select it, and now you can click on Select Folder, which would be Choose if you were on a Mac. Don't worry about the other settings you see here. They're fine to leave as the default options. So when that's all done, you can click on the OK button here at the bottom. In Premiere CS6, what you'll see next is this new sequence window, which gives you all sorts of preset options for creating a new sequence. A sequence is where you put all of your clips together to make your video. These presets are designed to match the various formats of different video cameras. So if you know what you're doing here, then you can go ahead and select a specific preset to match your footage, which will normally be full HD. If you're not sure, just ignore this step and leave the default preset selected because you can adjust your sequences to match your footage later. So I'm just going to leave it on the preset that's already selected and click OK. We've gone through all the initial steps and now we're presented with Premiere's main interface. As you can see, the interface is made up of lots of windows. I'm just going to go over them all now so you get an idea of what you're looking at. This is the default layout and it's what you'll see when you open Premiere up for the first time. It's a flexible workspace that you can adjust as you want, but for the purposes of this video, we're just going to leave it as it is. This window that I've got selected here now, and you can see it's selected by this yellow line around it, is the project window. This is where you put and organize all of your elements, such as your footage and your sequences. Think of it as a filing window for your project. As you can see, we've already got a sequence in here. Above that is the source monitor. This is where you view your clips, and you can also edit their length. At the moment I haven't got any footage in my project. But if I did, to view a clip, all I'd need to do is double click on it and it would appear here in the source monitor. Next is the timeline. Sequence 01 is already open on my timeline. A sequence is a collection of clips that you're editing together. It's the video you're building. You can grab elements from either the project window or the source monitor and bring them into a sequence. 
and you can have several sequences open here at once on the timeline, where they'll appear as tabs. I'll talk more about how the timeline and sequences work later on. For now, all you need to know is that you view what you've got on your sequence here up in the program monitor, and it's connected to this playhead, which marks where you are on the timeline. So those are the main windows. You've also got two small windows that are important to know about. One of them is this tools panel, which is where you can select various editing tools, such as the razor tool here to make a cut. Then on the other side of the timeline, you've got this audio meter, which measures the volume of any audio you play with bars that jump up and down. There are three additional windows I'm going to talk about in this video series. The first is the effects window, which is a tab here behind the project window. This is where you'll find all of Premiere's pre-designed effects and transitions, such as fades. Then there's the effect controls window, which is up here. This is where you make adjustments to any effects you've added, or to any parameters that are already inherent to your clip, such as the size or the audio volume. And lastly, there's this audio mixer, which we'll come to right at the end of the video series, when we're making the final adjustments to our sound. There are lots of other windows that can be opened in Premiere. If you go up to the menu at the top and click on Window, you can see all the possibilities here. So if you accidentally close one of the main windows, you can easily open it up again by finding it on this list. So let's just accidentally close the Source Monitor by pressing on this X. Now let's go to the Window menu and find the Source Monitor. And there it is. The other thing you can do here in the Window menu is play about with the overall layout of the interface here under Workspace. As you can see, there are several presets to choose from. But as I said, we are going to stay with the default workspace in this video, which is the editing preset. The other thing you can do here is reset your current workspace. So if you've been playing about with the interface and change things around, you can get back to the default layout by clicking here. So now you've got an idea of what you're looking at. Let's start by bringing some media in. You can bring all sorts of things into Premiere, footage, music, photos, logos, all the things you need to put your video together. In general, the main thing you're going to be dealing with is footage. I've got a collection of clips I want to work on, so let's bring them in. As with most actions in Premiere, there are several ways of importing media. The most basic way is to open the file menu and click on import. This opens the import window, where you can navigate to your media files on your computer. Another quicker way of doing this is to right click on any empty space in the project window and select import. There's also the keyboard shortcut, which is Ctrl I or Command I on a Mac. So I've got my clips in my project folder on my desktop. So let's navigate there. And there you can see my footage folder holding my clips. I could import this whole folder if I wanted, or just one file, or a selection of files. If you do import a folder, be aware that Premiere will only recognise one level, so if you've got additional folders inside your folder, you'll get all of the files, but you won't get the organisation. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to go into the folder and select all of the files. So let's do that by holding down the Shift key on my keyboard and clicking on each of them. This is just one way of selecting. I'll show you other ways as we go on. There, now they're all selected, I can press the Open button down here. Premiere has brought all my clips into the project window. There are two different ways of viewing these clips. At the moment I'm in list view, the other option is icon view. You change between the two using these little buttons down here. Icon view is a good mode for quickly browsing through your footage. You can skim through the clips right here in the project window just by moving your mouse over them. If you click on a clip to select it, you get a mini timeline and a playhead down at the bottom. You can click anywhere on this timeline to jump through the clip or you can scrub through the media by dragging the playhead backwards and forwards. There's a way of playing the clips here too. Just press the space bar on your computer. That's the keyboard shortcut for play. Press it again to stop. All of these actions are the same wherever you go in Premiere. So wherever you've got media to play, you'll get a timeline and a playhead, and you'll be able to use the space bar as a shortcut. If you do want to view your clips in the icon view like this, you can make them bigger by using the slider down here, with the mountain icons. But I don't really like to use the icon view when I'm editing. I prefer the list view because it's better for organising, so let's change to that now. In both list and icon view, you can watch a clip by clicking on it to open it in the source monitor. 
Once open, you can play the clip using the play button here. You can also use the space bar and the playhead in the ways I've just shown you. It's important to understand that these clips have not been physically brought into Premiere. What the software does is link to the files on your computer. This means if you were to move the files from their original location, the link would be broken. So it is important to have all of your media organised and tidy before you start this process. Good organisation is also important within Premiere. So let's talk a bit about that now. Organising your project window is something you should do right at the beginning and you need to make sure you keep things tidy as you work. This will help you keep on top of things as you go through your edit, especially if you're dealing with a large amount of media. So the way we organise things here is to create folders. Premiere calls folders bins, which comes from the days when editors worked with film and would store selected sections in bins. To create a bin, make sure you have the project window selected by clicking on it. As I said, you can see if you've got the window selected because it will be highlighted by this yellow outline. Now you can go up to the menu bar, click on file, go to new and select bin. And there you go, as you can see, a new bin has been created in my project window. Another way to create a bin is to right click on any empty section of the project window and select new bin like this. The keyboard shortcut for this action is control slash on a PC or command slash on a Mac. Now I've got two bins. The one I've just created has its name highlighted, which means I can type a new name in. Let's call it footage. To rename the other bin, select it, then click on the name and it will become editable. Don't double click on the bin, because that will open it up in a new window. So let's call this bin sequences. You can create whatever folders you want to help organise your elements, and you can have folders inside these folders. For good basic organisation, we recommend having at least one other bin in here, and that's for additional media such as music, logos and photos. In my project folder on my desktop, I've got an Other Elements folder, holding an MP3 track and a logo. Instead of creating a bin in Premiere and importing these elements separately, this time I'm just going to import the whole folder from my desktop. So let's open the Import window again. Right click, select Import. My project folder is already selected, and there's the Other Elements folder. Select it and press Import Folder. There, now I've got the folder in my project within Premiere. Let's see if my elements are in there too. To do that, I need to open up the folder by clicking on this little arrow here, and there they are. So now I've got my three main bins and ready to sort things out. First things first, let's move these clips into the footage bin. Click and hold on a clip, then move your cursor up to the bin. You can see it's highlighted. Now release the mouse and the clip will move into that folder. You can select a bunch of clips and move them together using the box select. Just click and hold the mouse, then move your mouse cursor over the clips you want to select. You can see I'm creating a box. Anything that box covers will be selected. Now I can drag all of these clips into the footage bin. Let's just have a quick look at these clips I've just put in my footage bin. Now, as you can see, most of my clips in the footage bin have this little icon next to them. That means they are made up of both video and audio. This clip here, called Time Lapse, is only video and has no audio. And this clip here, Russ Interview Sound, is only audio. To be extra organised, I'm going to create a special folder for this audio clip, and you'll see why later on. Select the footage bin, right click and press New Bin. There. Now I've got a new folder within the footage bin. Let's call it audio, and let's move the audio clip into it. And to finish tidying up, let's move the sequence into the sequences bin. So if you click, drag and drop, and there we go. Now we've got a nice tidy project window, and we can move on. So what we're going to do now is move over to the timeline, and start working on that. If you remember, when we launched Premiere, there was a new sequence window that we ignored. It is, however, very important that you get your sequence settings right because otherwise you could come across all sorts of technical issues. You can't change the settings of your sequence once you've started editing, so we're going to do it now using our footage. If all of your footage has been shot by the same camera using the same format, you can use any clip to establish your sequence settings. If lots of different cameras have been used, you need to work out what format the bulk of the footage has been shot in, and use that as your baseline. Otherwise, you should use the footage from the highest quality camera. Ideally, what you're looking for is high definition footage that's been shot at 25 frames per second. You can check these settings in your project window. 
So let's open the footage bin and take a look. As you can see, next to each element, you've got columns of information. If you go down to the bottom here, you can use this bar to scroll along the columns. One of the first columns is the frame rate. All of my clips are 25 frames per second, which is standard in the UK. The only clip that doesn't have 25 frames per second next to it is this audio clip, which has 48 kilohertz. That's the audio sampling rate, which basically means the quality of the audio. 48 kilohertz is the industry standard for video sound. To see the frame size, we need to scroll along to video info. Most of my clips are 1920 by 1080, which is full HD. The numbers mean that the footage is made up of 1920 horizontal pixels and 1080 vertical pixels. The 1.0 relates to the shape of the pixels, which are square. This clip here is much bigger than HD. It's got a frame size of 3072 by 2304. I'll show you how to deal with that later on. Now, as most of my clips are HD, I'm going to use one of them to establish my sequence settings. Let's choose the first one. What you're going to do is drag it over to your sequence and drop it there. So click on it, hold the mouse down and move it over. When you see the clip appear on the sequence, you can release the mouse. When you do that, unless your sequence settings are already correct, you'll get this warning window pop up. It says that the clip does not match the sequence's settings and asks if you want to change the settings or not. As our aim now is to establish our sequence settings, what we want to do is select change. So let's do that. And there you go, my sequence settings are now correct and match the bulk of my footage. And I can see that here in my project window. The frame rate of our sequence is at 25. And the frame size is at full HD. Now, I want to talk a bit about how this timeline works. To do that, I'm going to bring all of the rest of my clips in and put them after this first clip. So let's go back to our footage folder and hold the shift key down to select all the other clips one by one. Now they're all selected, but let's just click on this audio clip again because I don't want to work with it right now. And also let's deselect the camera clip because we already have it in our sequence. So let's just drag them onto the timeline. I want to position them just after the first clip and Premiere is helping me snap them into place and release. Now as you can see, I've got several clips on my timeline, one after another. If I were to play them, they'd play one after another. And the length of each clip in the sequence shows you how long it is. This one here is very short compared to the one next to it. To play this sequence, you can press the play button here on the program monitor. When I do that, you can see the playhead on the timeline starts to move along the clips. To stop, just press this button again. As I said, an easier way to do this is to press the spacebar on your computer, which is the keyboard shortcut for play. Press the spacebar again to stop. To use this shortcut, just make sure you've got what you want to play selected. If you want to jump to a particular point on your sequence, you can click on any point up here under these numbers. This is your time ruler. It's marked out like a ruler in frames, seconds and minutes. As you can see, when I click on a point, the playhead jumps straight there. You can also click and hold on the playhead and drag it backwards and forwards to scrub through the sequence. Navigating your sequence is important for speed, so I'm just going to show you one or two more things that will help you do that. The first is a keyboard shortcut that allows you to jump between edit points. Edit points are where one clip ends and the next begins. It's marked by this line between my clips. To jump to the next edit point, just press the down arrow key on your keyboard. And to go to the previous edit point, press the up arrow. As you can see, I'm jumping through my sequence now from clip to clip. It's worth noting that you won't be able to navigate like this unless you've selected your track. You can see here on the side if a track is selected because it will be highlighted. Both Video 1 and Audio 1 are selected at the moment, but if I click on Video 1, that will deselect it. Click on it again and it's selected again. The arrows on your keyboard are also useful if you want to move through your sequence frame by frame. To go forward, press the right arrow, and to go back, press the left arrow. I'm moving forwards now frame by frame, and you can see the small changes in the image as I move through. You can also see these numbers counting up. When I get to 25 frames, I go up a second. This movement is useful for detailed editing work, such as shaving just one frame off the end of a clip. To do such detailed work, you really need to be able to look more closely at your sequence, so you need to zoom in and out. 
you can zoom in and out using this bar below the sequence. I've zoomed in now, and as you can see, the clips look longer. I haven't changed their length of course, I've just zoomed in to look more closely at my edit points. The relative length of each clip stays the same. Let's zoom back out now, so that we can see all of our clips together. Another way to zoom in and out is to use the dash and equals buttons on your keyboard. They work as plus and minus within Premiere. You'll need to zoom in and out a lot when you're editing, so it's worth learning this keyboard shortcut. The timeline is divided into two sections. This upper section is where the visual elements go, and the lower section is for audio. As you can see, most of my clips have two parts, video and sound. At the moment, these two parts are connected, but you can unlink them and treat them separately, which I'll show you how to do later. As well as these two parts, you can see several tracks. All of my clips are currently sitting on track one, but I could have them on any track I wanted, and if they were one after another, they'd play just the same as they do now. To move a clip to another track, just select it by clicking on it. As you can see, it becomes a bit darker when it's selected. Now hold down on your mouse and drag it up. There, the video part is now on video 2 track, but the audio hasn't moved, so let's drag that down to audio 2 track. As we're using track 2 now, let's make sure we have it selected on the side here, so that we can navigate easily. The audio track is already selected, but we need to click on video 2 here. Now, if I drag this clip along, so that it's on top of the clip after it, what happens is you'll only see the top clip. It's covering up the clip below. It works differently on the audio sides of things, because you can hear the sound from both clips. So, with visual elements, you'll see what's on the top. With audio elements, everything mixes together. As we're working with tracks now, it's useful to know that they can be expanded. Video 1 is already expanded, which is why you can see these helpful thumbnails at the start of each clip. To open up Audio 1, just click on this little arrow here. Now you can see the audio waveform, which is a graphical representation of the clip's sound waves. It shows you where you've got sound and where you haven't. The bigger the wave, the louder the sound. To expand these tracks even more, hover over the lines separating them until this double arrow icon appears. Then click on the line and drag it up and down like this. If you find yourself needing more tracks, it's very simple to add them. Simply drag a piece of media, like this clip, to this blank space above the video tracks you already have, or below the audio tracks, and a new track will be added like this. You can also right-click on this area to the left side of the tracks and select Add Tracks. When you right-click, you have the option to delete tracks as well. So let's delete the ones I've just added. Click inside the little box here next to Delete Video Tracks, and the default is to delete all the empty tracks. That makes things neat. So let's go for that option and press OK. The other useful things you can do to tracks is turn them off and lock them. You turn a video track off by clicking on this eye icon here. Now it won't show in your program monitor. Click on the empty box to open the eye and turn the track on again. Similarly, to turn an audio track off, click on this sound icon. To lock a track, click on this box. A little lock icon appears, and the track is crossed out. Locking a track means nothing can be moved within it or over it, which is useful if you've perfected an edit and you don't want it to change. We haven't done any editing yet, so let's turn these locks off. So, in this video, we've set up a project, established our sequence settings, and had a look at Premiere's interface. Now we're ready to start editing, which is what we'll be looking at in part two of this series of CADARN training videos.